Welcome to the second Twine tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to cover choices, variables, and simple if else conditional statements. Now, as you can see, I've changed the pirate story slightly. The star passage now reads There is a pirate in front of you, with the links to run away or fight, which, of course, link to the passages run away or fight. Now, I want to enforce a choice here. I don't want the option to pick, run away, and fight. I want the option to pick, run away, or fight. So what I need is a choice. Just like in the last video, I can change this and use the tokens of two less than signs to indicate to the Twine editor that I'm now going to write some code. Choice, put runaway in quotation marks and end it with two greater than signs. I would now do the same. Here. And as you can tell in the background map, start, is linked to the passages run away and fight. So let's see what that looks like. File, save story, story, build story, replace the pirate file. And as you can tell, I'm now using Google Chrome. What look like links, run away and fight, are actually choices. If I click on run away, fight is grayed out. Rewind. If I click on fight, run away is now grayed out and I can no longer choose it because I've made a choice between run away or fight. Coming back to Twine, we set up choices. Now let's do variables. Again, two less than signs indicating this will be code and not just text. Set. Using the dollar sign, this is a special token that indicates to Twine that what I'm about to type is the name of a variable. What I've just written is what's known as an assignment statement. It is left associative. Now that sounds kind of complicated, but what it basically means is the variable on the left is assigned the value on the right. That is, the variable num run away, which is indicated by starting with a dollar sign, is set to the value first. First is a string. It is set off using quotation marks. I am also going to write set num fight, which is a variable, equal to first as well. Now, right now, those aren't doing much. We have variables and they have values, but we're not really using them. So let's change that. Going to the fight passage. I'm now going to use print to display the value of the variable num run away and enclose it, of course, with two less than signs, two greater than signs. You fight with the pirate. It is the value of num run away time. But that's very strange, right? I wrote run away. What I actually meant to write was fight. Now in run away, if 
you run away, it is the print value of num run away time. File, save story, story, rebuild story, come down to Chrome, refresh. There is a pirate in front of you, run away, you run away, it is the first time. As you can see, Twine, when we ran the story, printed the value of the variable num run away. Going to rewind to the start passage, fight, you fight with the pirate, it is the first time. So as you can see, I can display the value of variables after setting them initially. Now, that's all well and good, of course, if you want to display specialized text or do something fancy. But what if you want to check if something is equal to something else? That is, what if you want to use a conditional statement? So let's do that now. I'm going to change the fight passage to now read if num run away eq, that is, if the variable num run away is equal to first display or run the text underneath the if initial statement. You have run away one time. Else, the variable num run away is not equal to the string first. You have run away many times. And we close conditional statements, if statements, with an end if. It starts with if, then some type of conditional, if a variable is equal to a value, else, and then end with end if. So right now, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense because num run away is set equal to first in start and will always be first by the time we get to fight. So let's change it and run away. Let's now set num run away to be equal to second. This is the string second. And give the option that is the link go to fight. And as you can see on the map in the background, the passage run away is now linked to the passage fight. File, save story, story, rebuild story. Chrome, refresh. I can run away. This is the first time I can fight. I have run away many times because it is no longer the first time. As we go back to Twine, I set num run away to be equal to a different value than what I checked for in the passage fight. I checked if num run away is equal to first. It's not. Run away, it is equal to second. As we can verify by going back, refreshing, going to fight, I run away one time because the value num run away was set to first within the start passage. As we can tell, because you fight with a pirate, it is the first time. Num fight is also equal to first at this point. 
So, this is relatively simple. However, building from setting variables and checking if they are equal to something else, you can build a number of branching passages. Using choices, you can also enforce, well, a choice between passages. You're of course not limited to two passages. You can have as many as you would like and force the player to choose one or the other or the other or the other or the other for as many as you'd like them to have. In the next video, I will cover changing the story title, changing the story author, and beginning to change the visual layout of how passages appear on the screen. Thanks for watching.